This is Roger Struckoff with Syscon TV. We're at Cloud Expo East in New York in the year 2015, and we're joined right now by Hasib Boudani with SOA Systems. He's going to tell us all about it. SOA, S-O-H-A. Um, tell our audience uh, what you're all about and why you're here at Cloud Expo. Sure, Roger. So we provide a service that allows our customers to keep bad guys out and let good guys into their applications running in the public cloud, private cloud, or in a classic data center. Okay. So there's bad guys out there? Apparently, I've heard there's bad guys out there. Um, you know, the challenge we have is, um, you know, we spend a lot of time securing things, uh, you know, the front door basically. So customers coming in, bad guys coming in, we spend a lot of time and money on that. Uh, our point of view is that uh, when it comes to access, you know, people outside the organization, this could be employees, this could be partners, this could be your DevOps people or customers. All of them, you know, uh, kind of, you know, expose you to to some access related attacks that we need to think about. And our point of view is that if we could basically take your application infrastructure off the internet and put it behind a service that takes care of you know, things like uh, uh, you know, authentication attacks, authorization attacks, you know, DDoS attacks, and so on at the application level, this provides a better security model for applications, particularly when you not only have one data center, you may have 15, 20, 30 different pops in the cloud because it's so easy to have many locations in the cloud. And when it comes to many locations in the cloud, uh, the challenge is, well, how do I build a perimeter in every location? And what we're saying is, look, instead of building a perimeter in every location, you use our service, which essentially gives you an application-specific perimeter as a service. Okay. And then you, you mentioned, you know, a lot of companies will have a lot of trusted vendors, <clears throat> suppliers, customers, uh, contractors, right. and so a part of uh, keeping the bad guys out is ensuring that the good guys can get in, right? And so you can take us through that a little bit, because it seems like that's a kind of a complex task to authenticate the right people. Right, you know the, the 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 basic kind of precept here is when we give access to users today, more often than not, in addition to give them access to an application, we give them access to an uh, to the network as well. And we've heard about the attacks that have happened at Target and Home Depot, etc., where there was some good guy who lost his credentials, and some bad guy was able to use those credentials and do a, a horizontal privilege escalation attack, which means you know instead of going to the application that this good guy was allowed to, they went to other places in the network. So if you if you consider for a minute that if that good guy was only allowed access to that one application instead of the network, we would significantly reduce the attack surface. And that's the first thing we do. What we basically do is, before a single request from a device tries to get into the network, we identify the user based on you know, their, their authentication credentials or whatever the policy may be, certificates, et cetera. Um, once we know who this person is, so this is Roger trying to get to my application. We, just, right? we connect Roger's device to that application instead of giving Roger network access, which is what VPNs do. So from that perspective, although VPN solved a big problem of access, they actually expose us to an attack surface, which is now Roger has access to the network. Now Roger could be a good guy, but his device could have malware on it that you don't know about, and that's the problem. That's what I was thinking. You've got a lot of device control now. You also have the idea of a lot of these people are so mobile. How do you identify, <clears throat> to me, in my little world, similar to credit cards? I want to buy gas with a credit card, right. but I'm way away from home and it checks just to make sure and sometimes they even call me. Right. Um, how do you, because there's got to be a lot of mobility and a lot of devices and a lot of threats to the devices. How do you handle all of that? Sure, so as a, as a basic service, as part of our service, as a basic feature, uh, we provide integration with your Active Directory or your SAML provider or your ADFS or your Google, et cetera. So pretty much any directory service that you are using in-house or externally, we have integrations with. And before a request hits the application, we will authenticate you against that. And if our customers do not happen to have one, we provide a service as well. In addition, we provide multi-factor authentication, so very similar to how uh, a, a bank will say, look, I've never seen you come from this device before, or you're, you're coming in from an environment where I've never seen you come from before. You're from California, but you're locking in from New York. Right. right? So I'm going to send you a text to your phone, you bring that text back, and then I know who you are. So we build that as well. And by the way, all this does is, uh, is identify Roger as a person, which is good, but the more critical question is, how do we open up the network to let Roger in? And that's our core IP. 
So instead of letting users in at the layer four level, at the TCP level or the IP level, we only connect Roger's device at the layer seven level. So from an attack perspective, Roger can only see one IP for that application, which is not actually in the network. It's in our cloud. So we provide effectively a full surface that uh, nobody else can uh, attack and get into the network with. Well, now, you mentioned horizontal escalation threat. This is sophisticated stuff. So uh, for your customers, why are people trying to get there? Is it, is it vandalism, or are they really actively trying to steal intellectual property or, or you know, for financial gain? I think bad guys uh, are usually very smart. So they figure out that, look, certain doors are, are rock solid, and there's no point in banging ahead on it. But certain doors are not. So third party access or operational access is usually the one place where bad guys are able to get in because what they do is they can attack, you know, they can create like a, a social networking, a social engineering attack, for example. And they can find Roger's typical username and password on some other website. And th there's a chance that you, Roger may be using the same password somewhere else, yes. which happens a lot. And they're going to use that to get in. So they, 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 they mount these attacks somewhere else and collect information and bring it here, which is called social engineering. Right. Um, and I think that part is usually kind of missed. Even with social engineering, I mean, there are tools like FireEye and so on to protect you from that. The challenge that we are addressing is, look at the network level, why are we giving people access to the actual network when all they need access to is an application? And that is a core concept. And on top of that, why are we giving access to IP addresses when we should be giving access to people? You have sort of a, a sweet spot for customers in terms of size or different types of industries they're in or locations? Sure, so our very first customer was a chip company. Okay. They had some very big customers who were buying their chips and they needed access to an SDK and they were using us to control who would get in and, and, and grab that SDK through a yeah. Git server. That, that was our very first use case. But since then, we have a number of startups, a number of application service providers, uh, a couple of CDNs. So it's kind of all over the place because it solves, this solves a horizontal problem. Not only does it solve the third party access problem, in fact, if you were to build your own, let's say you build the best CRM in the world, which is better than Salesforce.com, the minute you build it, if, let's say you did. Do it. Yeah. If you did, yeah. the next thing you would do is you would spend the next year and a half building security. See, because, that's why I haven't done it. Yeah. But, no, I get you. but now if you do, we got, we got you covered, right? And the whole point is that, look, why do we spend time building, hey, look, we, we, spend, we yeah. spend time building our apps, and then we build this, this security practice within our organizations. Yeah. Every single company out there reinvents the wheel when they should not. The idea that, look, my, my data center, which is Amazon now, is a service. My van link is a service through Amazon. My, my computer is a service, my, everything is a service. Security is not. Security, I got to build from scratch. Pretty much every company does this. And our point of view is that, look, this should be also available as a service, which is what we've done right. as a business. That's what, that's what you do. So how do people contact you? What's your URL? So it's soha.io, uh, and you can find us there, and um, there's a free, I, I want to call out, there's a freemium service. So look, the idea that this is a service, it, the proof should be in the pudding, and services must be easy to use. So you can go to our website, set up an account yourself, and try our freemium service, and you'll see that, look, in 15 minutes or so, you can take an internal application, as one example, expose it completely securely on the internet without changing the devices, without changing the application, or without changing the network. And that's what you'll find with our service. I love those I.O. addresses. I think that's the way to go. It's, sure, and, sure. Yeah, it, it, and it, you know, it's got the geek aspect, and, it's, and, and you just get the name. You, I, I have a couple of my own. Um, when I compete with Salesforce, it, it'll, be as, it, it'll be one of my I.O. Uh, domains that I have. No, it's great. Soha, S-O-H-A dot I-O. We've been sitting here for a few minutes with Hasib Budani with that company, talking about the bad guys and how to keep them out, and also as important how to make sure the good guys can get in. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for watching. For Syscon TV, this is Roger Struckoff.